Hello and welcome to the News at 10, right on Super Screen Television, coming to you live from our studios in Lagos, Southwest Nigeria. And blessed among us, many thanks for joining us. The presidency says the new minimum wage bill has been transmitted to President Muhammad Buhari last week. Senior Special Assistant to the President of National Mid Assembly Matters, Senator Itang Anang, who disclosed this to journalists in Abuja, said the new national minimum wage bill, as passed by the National Assembly, has been transmitted to the presidency and the bill is currently undergoing standard procedures. According to the Acting Chairman of the Senate Under Committee on National Minimum Wage Bill, Senator Francis Elemikena. A fine of 75,000 Naira has been imposed on firms that refuse to comply with the minimum wage fine. Senate President Bukola Saraki has also urged the federal government to pay the new minimum wage without delay and not to allow workers go on strike to demand the implementation. The Second Republic Senator Azan Adisa Fashiro is dead. Fashiro died at, at, passed on at exactly 8.29 p.m. yesterday after a brief illness and was aged 99. Popularly called HAB, Fashiro was the first clerk of the Lagos City Council. He would have clocked 100 years by September. In reaction, the Lagos State Governor Akinwumi Ambode in a statement signed by his Chief Press Secretary Abi Baruno described Pa Fashiro as one of the greatest founding fathers of Lagos State. Commiserating with the family of the late elder statesman, Ambode urged them to uphold the ideals he stood for, saying that the nation would continue to draw inspiration from his life and times. The Lagos State Tax Force on Environmental Sanitation and Special Offenses Enforcement Unit has impounded 109 motorcycles for operating on restricted routes. Chairman of the Tax Force, Olainka Egbeyemi, who disclosed these, said the motorcyclists were operating on restricted routes and driving against traffic in the second rainbow end of the Oshudia Papa Expressway. According to Egbeyemi, the raid was carried out after several warnings to the motorcyclists after a series of complaints were received from the public on the legal and criminal activities of the rider. He also urged motorcycle Riders Association across the state to educate their members on all the one on the 475 restricted routes and the life threatening dangers surrounding plain, highways, and bridges. Now, the Edo indigents in Lagos State has congratulated the Lagos State Governor in led Babajide Songwolu and his deputy. Deputy Kadiri Amzat for their victory in the 2019 gubernatorial elections. Chairman of the group, Ewi Ehim. Waru attributed the victory to Songwulu's commitment and focus as a detravelized individual. The group reminded the governor elect and his deputy of the pivotal roles Edo in Lagos have always played in the development of the state. And now, talking politics now, the River State's Governor Yesom Winke has called on the Independent National Electric Commission, INEC, to ensure that the military is not part of the coalition of the governorship and legislative election results. Winke will make the call in Port Arco during a stakeholders meeting organized by the commission, stated that the army were responsible for the violence which erupted in some area during the March 9 governorship and House of Assembly poll. You will recall that INEC said the coalition of resort, election results will be carried out between April the 2nd and 5th, 2019. The People's Democratic Party PDP in Katsina State and its candidate, Yakubu Ladu, has formally filed a petition before the election petition tribunal challenging the conduct of the March 9 governorship election. This is to beat the April 1st, 2019 deadline for fil filing petitions before the election tribunal. A member of the legal team and senior advocate of Nigeria, SAN, Godi Uchi, who led others to file the petition, says his clients are challenging the victory and educational qualifications of Governor-elect Aminu Masari of the All Progressive Congress, APC. According to Uchi, more expert rates are joining the team to solidify the grounds when the jerry commences. Add of the 2019 and over dates to newly elected.
2019 and of the date of newly elected state headmen, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has set up teams to probe some governors accused of perpetrating acts of corruption. According to reports, I had of the May 29. May 29, 2019, and over date of the newly elected state headmen, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the FCC, has set up teams to probe some governors elect for perpetrating acts of corruption. According to reports, four governors have been accused of corruption. They include Governor Rocha Sokorocha of Imo State, Kwara State Governor Abdufakta Ahmed, the chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum, and Governor of Zamfara State, Abdulaziz Yari, and Ogun State Governor Ibikole Amosun. EFCC spokesman Tony Uriladi, who also disclosed these, said all the corruption allegations will be treated on a case-by-case -case basis and investigations have been ongoing as regards some of these cases as soon as the immunity is gone. You recall that the Federal High Court in Abuja has had done an interim forfeiture of the sum of 500 million naira and $500,000 says to have been looted from the Paris Club refund made by the Federal Government in favor of the 36th state of the Federation in 2017. The leadership of the Oanese Digbo Youth Council has pleaded with President Muhammad Obwari to intervene in the order for the arrest of the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, Nandi Kalu. The President General of the Oanese Indigo Youth Council, Okechuku Iziguro, and Secretary General Oku Inabuike made this known in a statement, said such action might destabilize the fragile peace that are returned in the southeast region. You will recall that the Federal High Court in Abuja on Thursday ordered the arrest of Kanu and directed that his trial on charges of treasonable felony proceed in his absence. The court also revoked the bill it granted Kanu in 2017. And our talk in security matters as part of its efforts to effectively tackle a wide range of threats imposed by various terrorist and extremist groups in Nigeria. An African-based global defense and aerospace company, Paramount Group, has partnered the Nigerian Air Force to launch its Maruda Amon vehicle and personnel carrier within Nigeria. Speaking on the partnership, a senior vice chair president of Par Paramount Group, Eric Echi Covid, who commended the Nigerian Air Force for the acquisition and deployment of the Maruda, said it is a privilege to work with them and express the commitment towards enhancing the national defense and internal security capabilities and powers. The vehicle Maruda is a 15 tonnel and a uniquely designed armored land system that can be reconfigured as earlier as troop carri carrier or combat vehicle. It also maintains excellent cross country agility while reaching a top speed of 120 km per hour over challenging terrains. The vehicle also has double skewed halt throughout its cabin and crew components to com protect it against a wide range of Kenites attack from AK-47. And still on security matters, the Minister of Defense, Mansu Dan Ali, says the ongoing Boko Haram anti insurgency war in the Northeast has reduced the Nigerian's participation in the United Nations peacekeeping operations. Dan Ali, who disclosed this while addressing the UN peacekeeping ministerial meetings on capabilities, performance, and protection of citizens at the UN headquarters. New York said the federal government had put in place adequate measures to enhance the performance of troops and protect civilians during peacekeeping operations. According to the minister, Nigerians' participation in UN peacekeeping had declined significantly of recent due to commitments to fight against insurgents in the northeastern part of the country and sub-regional peacekeeping commitments. You're still watching the news at 10 right on Super Screen Television. We'll take a fast break and when we return, we'll bring you more in business. Stay with us.
Many thanks for staying tuned to the news at 10 right here on Super Screen Television. And now talking business. The Presidential Enabling Business Envi Environment Council, PAPEC, says it has commenced reforms towards making property registration and construction permits easy in all states across the country. PAPEC will disclose these in a statement said the reform initiative in conjunction with the Lagos State Government include removing the infrastructure development charge for two-floor warehouse construction permit applications, eliminating the requirement for a certified true copy of title document in the construction permit application process. You will recall that PEPEC was set up in 2016 by President Muhammad Buhari to address constraints to doing business and make the country a progressively easier place to start and grow a business. The Nigerian Union of Pensioners, NUP, Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria, has called for the implementation of the passenger service charge. The chairman of FAN, NUP, Razak Okwe, and secretary, Emeka Anjoku, who made the disclosure, said, the con said considering the current economic realities, there is a need for speedy implementation of the new PSC. They also urged the Minister of Evasion, Adi Sirika, to order all debtors of FAN to commence the settlement of debt owned by the agency, adding that the minister had been quiet on those owing FAN, especially airlines and concessionaries. According to the union, evasion should be given proper at attention, especially with the commission of new terminals across the country. And finally, on business, the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, LCCI, has hailed the Central Bank of Nigeria CBN reduction of the monetary policy rate, NPR, from 14% to 13.5%. LCCI Director General Muda Yusuf, who made the commendation in a statement, said the policy was in consonance with the clamor by the private sector for, relax for a relaxation of the tight monetary policy, regime in the light of weak consumer demand, a fragile economic growth and high rate of unemployment. The NPR, which is used to determine bank lending rate and the cost of credit for borrowers, had been held at a rec record high of 14% since July 2016, when it was hiked by 200 basis points from 12%. We will recall the Monetary Policy Committee of the CBN on Tuesday reduced the monetary policy rate, also known as the benchmark on main or main interest rate, from 40% to 13.5% recently. And away from business, we take another short break and bring you foreign and sport news in a beat. Do join us again.